search of alien life sweeps by the ringed planet, Saturn, we can see the violently swirling gases that choke its atmosphere. We can also feel Saturn's gravity, weaker than Jupiter's, but still formidable. We'll keep moving. We're not likely to find living things here. Saturn's rings are also extremely inhospitable. They're made of rock and ice, as small as a grain of sugar or as big as a house. But Saturn has many moons, 56 that we've spotted so far. Our safari heads first to one of those moons, a tiny frigid satellite called Enceladus, just 500 kilometers in diameter. Here, gravity is very weak, a fraction of that on Earth. And Enceladus has hardly any atmosphere. It reflects back into space almost all the sunlight that hits it, making it the shiniest object in our solar system. Until very recently, we also thought Enceladus was too cold to support life. It appears we were wrong. In 2005, after a seven-year journey, the Cassini spacecraft approached the tiny moon and detected something that stunned the mission's principal investigator, Carolyn Porco. So th this was the picture that just, you know, grabbed us. Just was shocking. Those are plumes made of water from a geyser. The geyser's steam and hot water hit the cold vacuum of space and explode into a jet of ice. With little gravity to rein it in, the ice cloud can grow as big as Enceladus itself. Porco has never seen anything like it anywhere else. Vapor and icy snow hundreds of kilometers above the south pole of Enceladus. There's only one conclusion. Tiny frigid Enceladus is piping hot within. Like Jupiter, Saturn's giant gravitational field tugs on its satellites, creating friction and heat within. As far as we can tell now, it seems like an inescapable conclusion that there may be liquid water deeper down on Enceladus because it's warm. And the best models we can put forth right now to even explain the warmth, much less the jets, seem to indicate that you would get temperatures warm enough to melt water. <laughs> 